With the launch sequence complete, we're now ready to move on to do the media process test. Now, the media process test is a two-stage test. The first stage is to render a project, what I call the biometric scanner, into an MPEG-4 file. And I examine the MPEG-4 file to see if it conforms to the standards. If this is done, and it passes, I then do the rendering of the game anime project into an MPEG-4 file. So that's us baselined on the media process test. We now need to go over this very busy screen. So let's start through with the walkthrough. This area is about the CPU. The CPU is an i7, which is a quad core. Each core has two threads. A thread is known as a logical CPU. So what I'm looking for here is a balance across all these logical CPUs. So a proper usage of the threads and the CPU. Now that said, I'd like to look at a summary of that uh, thread usage, which is here, and a summary of the CPU usage. So this covers everything to do with the i7, apart from the fact that it doesn't look at the um, HD4000, which I know the Premier Elements doesn't use. This is the executive test dashboard, and I'm looking to see if any bottlenecks occurred and what caused it. So that's what you see here. And this will tell me what was on the CPU loader at any one time. And here I get a summary of the CPU and GPU. And the focus here will be on the CPU. Now this is the MSI Afterburner, which is a very good way of, of testing um, not only the whole system, but also if the GPU, any kind of library, is using any part of the GPUs, which would be handy. So now we're ready to do the test, and as you can see, I move straight into the biometric scanner project. Now, the media process in Adobe has always been very good and impressive. To get MPEG-4, you must go to AVCHD, and from that you get a big list of presets, now, of all these presets, I'm only interested in the MPEG-4. And if you tweak a, a preset, you get a custom preset, and that's always a, at the bottom of the list, as you just saw. So I'm going to show you how to create your own custom preset. First, I'll name the project and the file. Clicking Advanced is the start of the process. Now, this dialog is a, has a very simple workflow. It's top-down. The top part of the uh, dialog box is all the global or export settings. And the preset you pick to start off with, it gives you a summary here. If you study this, it could tell you what you need to tweak. Now, this area is all to do with the video. And with the video, you're most likely going to tweak the frames, profile, the level, which is very important for the constraints, and the bit rate or data rate for the video. And if you are confident you could tweak this, which is the group of pictures pattern. With that baselined, let's see the whole process in action. This is my me just giving a useful comment on the preset I'm going to create. Frames are going to change. And as I said before, profile is important. If you're doing 1080p or you're broadcasting across the internet, you should pick high. Baseline is virtually redundant. Main should not be picked. I do not know why Adobe have this by default. You are using 1080p. You pick 1080p. It should be high. It's a standard that these guys know this profile was made for. Now, the level should be anything above 4, by the way. Uh, but what you're seeing me do right now is uh, giving a name to the preset. So that's all done and the rendering start process starts. So it's set about 36 seconds. For a GPU only, the Movie Edit Pro 2014 did this in 21 seconds just using the GPB uh, or the general purpose processor or the CPU or software only, whatever they want to call it. Now, again, like Adobe Premiere Pro, this passed the container test but didn't pass the HRD test. And I will continue to do the game anime, but I am disappointed in Adobe not having this data 
present because it's important to know. It's like the spell checker of any document. You need to know if you overflowed or underflowed with a buffer. That helps make sure that it can be playable. So why it's not there, I do not know. So I'm about to do the game anime. When you do start a rendering project on most video editors, there seems to be an initial high activity. I've always assumed this to do some sort of workload balancing, but there's no apparent um, evidence of that with Adobe Premiere Pro. There is a lot of activity, but I don't see it balancing across those logical CPUs. And when I analyze the actual process space of Adobe Premiere Elements, which are now over here, I don't get that warm feeling that um, it's actually balancing that process very well. So I looked at the standard priority, uh, which is number eight. So this thread is running under normal priority. So all those threads in that logical CPU should be running under normal priority. When I look at the process graph, I'm seeing a lot of IO activity at the beginning start and literally no um, CPU load. So I'm assuming it's creating lots of little mini files where it's going to be dumping what it's doing into those mini files and that's why at the end of this I'm assuming it has a lot of IO operations. And I don't know if this is that efficient in, do in doing that. But on the uh, funny side, when you actually look at the um, way this goes through the estimated time it's going to complete you can have a bit of a heart flutter because it gives some very long times but it does stabilize it took about two hours 20 minutes to complete on software only um, and then it took a lot of iops afterwards but it was not as bad as the premiere pro the disappointing thing about all of this and it is disappointing is that it fails the HRD test, which was no surprise because Premiere Pro did as well. And what disappoints me so much is this application is so good for beginners and for uh, gamers even, and yet it's not professionally supported. And this is from a company with a reputation in this area and also a company that sat on the standards committee. Technical support is important as well as conforming to the standards.